Hi everyone, I'm Nicoletta from Nicoletta's Kitchen. I'm here in Paddy's Kitchen in Haymarket again. I've got my red lippy on and we're gonna do a special Christmas markets menu. Let's go. First, we're gonna kick off with my pavlova, secret style. We're gonna add some spices, some rose water, pomegranate and pistachios. Now the pavlova can be made the night before. I recommend this because it takes a little while in the oven and to get the perfect pavlova, you can keep it in the oven overnight so it doesn't crack. First, we're gonna crack our egg whites into a bowl. So separating the egg yolks are pretty easy. Just give it a tap. You don't want any yolk in your egg whites, otherwise your pav won't rise and it won't be light and fluffy. I'm just gonna whisk them up, fluff them up a bit before we add any sugar. You want to get them at soft peaks, just like that, and then start adding caster sugar, a tablespoon at a time. Don't rush this one. So we've been whisking for about three, four minutes, and you want to check whether the sugar has completely dissolved. And to do that, just grab a little bit on the end, Give it a little bit of a rub. If you can still feel sugar granules, that means it's not ready, so just whisk for a couple more minutes. All right, one final check. Perfect, we're good to go. We're gonna change it up a little bit. I'm gonna change the Aussie Pav and turn it into a separate style one by adding some ground cinnamon, ground cloves, and the corn flour. Corn flour is essential because it's gonna help make that meringue really chewy inside and crisp on the outside. So I'm just gonna sift that in a tea strainer, making sure there are no large pieces going through. There we go. Next, teaspoon of white wine vinegar. And then I'm gonna blend that for about five seconds more and then it's done. Now with my spatula, I'm just going to turn it a couple of times by folding it. You don't want to lose any of that air that we've worked so hard in getting. Now we're going to start building our pavlova. Grab a little bit of the meringue first. Let's create the first layer. Doesn't need to be perfect. You can go completely wrong and it still looks and tastes good. Look how glossy that looks. There we go. Now we're just going to use that remaining meringue that we've got there and just plop it on top and smooth it round. There we go, that's gonna go into the oven at 150 degrees Celsius fan for five minutes and then we're gonna drop it down to 100 and it's gonna bake for another an hour and a half and then we're good to go. All right, set your timer on, five minutes. Okay, while that's baking, we're going to prepare our grilled octopus and my Cypriot style potato and green bean salad. For the octopus, we're gonna bring a pot of boiling water, add some bay leaf, peppercorns, and salt. We're also gonna add some extra virgin olive oil into the pot of water for the octopus. Just a good drizzle. And a bit of white wine vinegar too. This just helps tenderize the meat. Our water's ready for our potatoes. We're just gonna pop them in to boiling water. They'll need about 15 minutes until they're soft. Our octopus water is ready, so we're just gonna pop that in, submerge it. This beautiful fresh octopus. Look at those tentacles just curling up, poor thing. In with his head, and then all those juices from the marinade. Beautiful octopus. Picked it up from Paddy's the other day. May I have those two, please? I'm going to make a Cypriot style grilled octopus. Oh, sure. Yeah. So good for you. Thank you. Well, have a Merry Christmas. Well, See you. I was going to cover that and let that boil for about 30 to 40 minutes until it tenderizes. While our potatoes and octopus are boiling, let's make the dressing. For the potato salad, I'm going to make the dressing in the bowl that I'm going to be serving it in. I'm going to eyeball this one. Good quality extra virgin olive oil, lemon juice. Keep an eye on your oki. Okay. We're gonna grate the garlic clove. This is just gonna give it a beautiful hum and a little bit of a kick. Good pinch of dried mint. Give it a bit of a rub to release those aromas. Give that a little bit of a mix. 
Then we're going to add the fresh herbs after we add the potatoes. All right, our potatoes have been boiling for about 15 minutes. I'm just going to give them a little check. Our potatoes are just dropping off the knife. That means they're cooked. Oki's looking good. Potatoes over here. Let's get to these chopping. Mind your fingers. Chop, 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 chop. Right, now while these are still warm, get them into your dressing and then give them a good toss. Now they've been coated really well. Next we're going to chop up our fresh herbs. I've got some parsley, a little bit of coriander and some mint leaves here. Pile up your mint leaves on top of each other. Here's a little trick now to get your mint leaves chopped up nice and finely. Pile them up like that. Roll it up like a cigar and then slowly cut through really finely. Take your time. Make sure you've got a sharp knife but keep your fingers away. And you've got beautiful strands of mint that are just going to run through our potato salad. Look at those lovely ribbons. Sprinkle those on top of your potato and then very carefully and finely chop your parsley and coriander. Another way you can chop your herbs up is keep your hand on top of your knife and just rock your knife up and down making sure your fingers are out the way. Now you've got beautifully finely chopped herbs. Alright our water's boiling so I'm going to pop my beans in before I forget them again. They just need a couple of minutes, just a quick blind. Right, just two or three minutes in the water. Finely chop some spring onion as well. Nice and finely, we don't need too much of this. There we go. Spring onions. They're looking good, I'm going to strain those now. Here we go with our beans. Don't forget them like me. Oh, we lost one. We've got some whole capers here. And then some baby ones. These are just going to give us a lovely pop of flavour as we're munching through our potato salad. Salt and pepper. Got a bit of white pepper here just for a lighter taste. And give it a good mix. So let's check our oki. It should be beautiful and tender. Pull it up a little bit, put your knife in. If it comes, if it, it goes in smoothly, that means it's lovely and tender. And our octopus is feeling good. Let's get this bad boy out. We're going to leave this to cool down completely now before we grill it. While that's cooling, we're going to make the dressing for the octopus. Now in a bowl, I already have some extra virgin olive oil and lemon. Similarly to our potato salad, we're going to grate some of the garlic in there. Again, giving it a lovely hum. A bit of our dried oregano and some fresh parsley, finely chopped again. That should do it. And some salt. The dressing for our octopus is done. I'm just gonna pop it to the side while we start prepping our white bait. Now in Cyprus, we call these aterina. And my yaya, my grandma, would make these every summer when I was younger. I wasn't keen on them at first because you eat the heads, but now I'm addictive. I'm going to show you how to prepare these. We're going to coat our white bait with some plain flour, semolina, corn flour, sweet paprika, garlic powder and salt and pepper. We're going to pop these into the freezer bag, give it a good little shake just so all the, our ingredients are mixed up together. Now I prepared the white bait last night. I gave them a good rinse. They come gutted from your fishmonger already so you just need to rinse them out and pat them dry with some kitchen towel and leave them in the fridge overnight. I'm going to put these into our freezer bag to coat them. Don't be shy. <laughs> Last little one. And then we're going to give it a good shake. Put your favourite kitchen tunes on and shake it, baby. Ready? Oh, I wish it could be Christmas. <laughs> coat them really well. They're looking really good, nicely covered. Don't forget to seal the top, otherwise you'll end up with a massive mess. And that's it, we're gonna pop them in here, shake any excess flour off, and then we're ready to start frying. In they go. 
and just give them a shake. Perfect. To fry the white bait, I'm using extra virgin olive oil, but the light flavor. We've brought our oil up onto a medium high heat. We've tested the oil to make sure one of our little fish is sizzling, and we're gonna start frying these in, in batches. We're gently and carefully popping them in. They're gonna start sizzling. They don't need too long at all. Once they start crisping up, we can start removing them. I've lined a plate with some kitchen paper and then we're going to pop them on there so any excess oil gets drained. We're nearly there, looking good. These are perfect for summer. Imagine you're coming back from the beach and you've got these on the table and you're just like nibbling on them. All right, these have crisped up beautifully and they're golden. We're nearly there, we just want to crisp them up a little bit more and it's better to slightly overcook them than undercook them but you'll start to see when they turn golden and crisp up. Gently move them around so they don't stick together as you're cooking them too. Alright, we're going to remove these now and pop them on some kitchen paper just to soak up that extra oil. That's it, batch two coming out now. These are really fun to have on the table, you can just have them on there and people can just pick and eat as they go along and they're really cheap to buy, really inexpensive and easy to make. You can just hear how crispy they are. Definitely worth giving a go. Mm. Try to stop me eating these now. Now we're going to salt these and then squeeze lemon on at the end because if you squeeze the lemon on now they'll go soggy and no one wants a soggy white bait. Onto our octopus. It's nice and chilled. We're going to cut each tentacle away from the main body part. And you can see how beautiful and tender this is as we cut through. It's like butter. And while I'm doing this, I've got a grill pan on on a high heat, and I'm going to put a bit of olive oil to char these. And then the head, we're just going to cut into pieces too. Okay, our uh, grill pan is ready. Just a dash of light olive oil, if there's any left. And then on with our oki. Ideally, you want to be doing this outside on the barbecue on some charcoal, but we're doing this on a grill pan today. No, they don't need long, just give them a bit of a char, checking on them every now and then. All right, our octopus is beautifully charred now. We're going straight into that dressing that we made. The heat from the octopus is gonna help suck up all those beautiful flavors and you're gonna get the most delicious Mediterranean style octopus for your Christmas lunch. Give it a good mix, beautiful. And then just plate it up any way you like. It's not gonna last long, trust me. It smells divine. I really hope you give this one a go, guys. It's one of my faves. Then pour the remaining juices and herbs over the octopus. You want all that flavor. Don't want it to go to waste. Remember, you don't want to put lemon on these until the very last minute, otherwise they'll go soggy. And again, a little bit of lemon on the side for that. And there you have it. We've got our grilled octopus and my separate style potato and green bean salad. Fried white baits, which you can just eat like chips. All right, so once these are all done, hand them out to your guests and then start making the pavlova and a beautiful cherry mocktail. Let's go. Okay, so we want to start prepping our pavlova just as we're about to serve it. Otherwise, the cream's going to make the pavlova soft. So as soon as you're ready to serve it, start prepping it. Now, this is the one that I made last night. We've got the one that we made earlier in the oven, but I've got a wooden spoon in between the door and I've kept the pavlova in there so it stays crisp and it avoids any cracks. Best to keep this overnight, so we're gonna crack on with one that I made last night. Now I'm gonna add a few drops of rose water just to give it that citrus taste. Rose water can be quite strong, it's beautifully and fragrant, don't put too much. And you can taste it as you go along so you can figure out how much you wanna add. We're just gonna whisk this until we've got soft peaks. All right, so our cream is pretty much done. We've got our soft peaks. And we're gonna start layering up our pav. Who wants to lick this? <laughs> Carefully add the cream onto the meringue, otherwise it could collapse. All right, if your pav starts to crack like this, you can cover it with the cream. And that's the brilliant thing about a pavlova, you can cover all your mistakes. We're gonna to top this off with some pistachios and pomegranate seeds. 
Just a handful will do. You don't need too many. So I have my bowl of pomegranates right here. I'll save this one for later. I've got my pomegranate seeds, crushed pistachios, and some mint. And then I'm going to grate some orange zest on top for that really festive flavour. There are no rules when it comes to styling your pavs. Get the kids involved with this one, they'll have heaps of fun. You can always have extra fruit on the side when you're serving this too, so you need a little bit of extra. Then pick your best looking mint leaves. Need just some orange zest. From up high, look at those beautiful colours. And there we have our Cypret style Christmas pavlova. All right, now we're going to make a cherry mojito mocktail. I'm going to make two because I can tell my cameraman Spud wants one. Two tall glasses and some cherries. We're just going to de-stone them. Cut round it, twist it, then remove the pit. You want about six cherries per glass. Now with a rolling pin or the back of a wooden spoon, you're going to squash your cherries to release their juices. We've got some very juicy cherries over here. This is gonna be a beautiful mocktail. All right, I think we're nearly there. Next, every mojito needs a bit of lime. So two pieces of lime, quarter it, and then pop them in your glasses. We're gonna give that a bit of a bash too. But not too much, otherwise you'll get the bitterness from the lime skin coming through your mocktail as well. Right, next, about six or seven mint leaves per glass. Now here's a little trick. Here's a little thing about me. I used to work in a cocktail bar after I finished university, so I know a little bit about cocktails. When you get your mint, you want to clap it to release its aromas and its oils. Give it a little clap and a rub and gently push down onto it two or three times. Next we're going to add some simple syrup. Really easy to make, just bring one cup of sugar and one cup of water to boil and give it a stir, leave it to cool and it's ready to use. I'm going to add about a tablespoon per cocktail. I don't like mine too sweet, but you can add a little bit more if you like. Now we're going to give it a bit of a mix. You can really smell that lime coming through with the mint and the sweetness from the cherries. Fill your glass to the top with ice. And then you're just gonna add some soda water or sparkling water, either or, it doesn't matter. Look at that. If that's not Christmas in a glass, then I don't know what is. Grab a bit of orange and zest on the top. Garnish with a bit of mint. Give it a clap. There we go, stick a straw in it. And there we have it, two cherry mojito mocktails. One for me and one for you, Spud. Here you go, ready? Cheers, Merry Christmas. Mmm, yum. Mm. This is actually my favorite recipe for, out of all of them. Even the kids will love this one. Yum. And if you want to be a bit naughty, put a bit of rum in. Two shots, not one. <laughs>